in addition to what I spoke last year about, about the power of prayer. And we're going to have a Eucharistic prayer healing service tomorrow. And one of the most powerful things about prayer that people don't understand is that we think, and our minds are conditioned this way, that we can only pray for a situation that is currently in front of us and very much more limited to the fact that our prayers can be effective back in time. In our book, Brother Jason and I lay out one of the things that really woke in me when I lost my grandmother to suicide was for 10 years after her death, I really wasn't practicing my faith. <clears throat> I didn't go um, to church on a regular basis. I was most concerned with my engineering career, engineering degree, buying new house, moving up the corporate ladder at an automotive uh, auto company in Detroit. And for 10 years, I never really lived that faith at all. And then when I came back to my faith, I had this huge guilt. I had this gigantic weight on my shoulders that I missed my opportunity to pray for my grandmother. Now she is lost. Now she has taken her life. Now she's in hell. And I didn't even pray for her before she died or immediately afterwards at the funeral because I was on another planet. And that weight, burden, and guilt weighed on me so heavily that I really shied away from the faith because I felt like a hypocrite. I can't go sit there in church and pray. I'm a hypocrite. And I hear that from a lot of people. But then I learned that I could pray today, 10 years after my grandmother died, for her salvation. I also learned that the church does not teach that somebody who takes their life automatically goes to hell. No, they may. We don't know. But it is not church teaching that someone who takes their life automatically is lost. Same with what we see with other deaths where people may appear to be in a wrong state. We don't know. God's mercy is so great he tells St. Faustina he comes to every soul three times and gives her uh, the soul a chance to accept him. Now, I talked about all this last year. And I'm not going to be talking about it again this year because I don't want to duplicate it. But the reason I bring it up is because of this gospel reading. One of the things that shocked me when I came back to my faith was that my prayer today can help my grandmother ten years ago at the moment of her judgment. I was like, but the priest told me this because my grandma died in 1993. And when the priest told me this, it was the year 2003. And I couldn't fathom that, Father, she's died. She's been judged. And he's like, look, God is outside of time. Past, present, and future are all one for God. He is not in time. It's hard for us to conceptualize, isn't it? Because we are created in time. For us, there is a past, there is a future, and there is a present. You know, uh, half an hour ago I was driving to Mass. Two hours from now I'll be driving to Riverside, California for a, some uh, work there. And so, in present, I'm here at the Mass. But the Our Father gives us a little clue. Did you notice? There are a series of petitions that are past, present, and future. Our Lord and our Father says, give us this day our daily bread. In that sense, he's taking care of the present. We're asking the Lord to take care of our present. Then in another part of the prayer, we say, forgive us our trespasses, meaning we bring the past to his feet. And then in another part of the Our Father prayer, we say, and lead us not into temptation, so we're bringing the future to his feet. You see the point? And the point is God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. He's all-powerful. He's omnipotent. So your prayers, God forever knows you will make them. 
and he has the power to apply them past, present, and future. Now, does that mean you can change the past? Does that mean I can pray today that World War II never happened? No. Of course not. But I can pray that my uncle who died in World War II goes to heaven, even though it's 75 years ago. So God gives us so much that we don't even use. We don't think about that. That the power of our prayer can go back and save, help save. Remember, we're, we're co-redeemers with a small c. Co means with, kum. Doesn't mean in place of Jesus or even equal to Jesus. But it's interesting. Jesus told St. Faustina that the salvation of thousands of souls depended on her prayer. When I read that at first, I almost threw the diary away. Because I was like, I don't, I don't like that. She's not God. And when Jesus said to her, her prayer, the salvation of thousands of souls depend on her prayer, I didn't sit well with me. But then when I learned that that is church teaching, that we share the body of Christ, we are united through his body, and he uses our prayers for redemption. He wants us to partake. This is what makes the Catholic faith different from the other 40,000 religions. We believe we are just not passive. We talked a little bit about Islam last night. In Islam, you have no part of anything. You are a slave. And God is a master who's going to beat you down. Our belief is not that. God is a loving, merciful God that wants you to partake in salvation history. You know, on the flip side, it's a little scary. Because what did, what did um, Mary say of Fatima to the three children? That many souls go to hell because there's nobody to pray for. And this is why you're here. This is why I'm here. Because right now we have the power to pray for these people. If you have lost anyone in your life 10, 15, 20, 50 years ago, offer the power of this Mass right now for the salvation of their soul at the moment of their judgment. Father, they've been judged. Yes, God is outside of time. There's no past for God. There's no future for God. Every single thing is present to God at once. My grandmother did not commit suicide in 1993, which is, what, 27 years ago to God? It's all present at once. So the power and prayer of this Mass can be applied to aid her at the moment of her judgment. No, we can't get, I can't get my grandma out of hell. I can't step in and accept God's grace on behalf of my grandmother if she rejects it. No, no, no. But we can offer that grace of our prayer through this Mass that if they accept it and we pray that the loved ones do, it gives them a much better opportunity to receive God's grace than without your prayer. That's why Jesus said to St. Faustina, the salvation of thousands of souls depends on your prayer. Because her active prayer on behalf of souls, and he never told them they had to be souls dying at that moment, they could be souls that are going to die in the future, souls that have died in the past. And that's what the Our Father tells us. We put to the Lord's throne prayers of the past, prayers of the future, and prayers of the present. And that's the beauty of our faith. And today, stay with us, because we're going to be exploring even more beauty of our faith. Brother Jason will continue with Divine Mercy, and I finally get to talk about our Blessed Mother. I've done four talks here, three last year and one this year, and I have not gotten to our Blessed Mother. And I'm so excited. So this morning we're going to show you and explain to you her important role and why we need her. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.